Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, the podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig, joined as always by Mr. Ann Patrick. Hello, good sir. Oh, special edition today. Hooray, special edition for the free, free agency. Yep, yeah, free agency legal tampering extravaganza. Frenzy. Yeah, frenzy. That's even better. I'm going to write that down. Free agent tampering frenzy. <laughs> okay. It started today, though. For yeah. Sure. So that was nuts. Lots of things happened. Let's start, I guess, at the Vikings, because it is, after all, a Vikings podcast. So they sign, or are about to sign. Anthony Harris. Anthony Harris. We (laughs) talked about it a little bit last week. Let's let's dig real deep into it now. So they (laughs) they signed Cousins. Um, What do you think, well, here, the three years, $28 million per year, $84 84 million guaranteed. How do you feel about the money portion? Fully, gu- of fully this? guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. I mean, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's apparently what, what it was going to take to get him. So, you know, it's actually probably less than what some people were throwing out there with the guarantees and stuff. And what the, actually, I think it was less than what the Jets were offering. So, Cousins, you know, clearly wanted to be in Minnesota. Just saw a video of him, you know, landing and getting in the van and stuff to go to dinner or whatever. Um, but he clearly wanted to be here, and, and the Vikings had to do what it, you know, to, what it took to get him here. So that's that's just we we talk about, you know, that's what it was going to take. It's it's going to take a bunch of money to get a quarterback like of his caliber. He's not he's not a Case Keenum. Yep. <laughs> and well. And no matter what happens, if they if he performs and the team performs poorly, he's going to be getting paid too much money. If they win a Super Bowl, it's not going to matter what he gets paid. I think that is, when I boil it all down, that's my biggest frustration with the too much money argument. Is It's yeah. not going to matter if you win the thing you want to win. And if they go to, you know, if they win the Super Bowl, it, you, who cares? And we don't, we don't know um, how the money is going to be spread out. It could mm-hmm. be, there could be a bunch coming this year, which I think would probably be the smartest, just to get rid of most of it and then have, you know, the rest of it spread out in the final two years. So maybe like uh, 30 to 40 million cap hit Mm -hmm. this year. And then, you know, the following two years have like 20 per year. But now, okay, so here's, stick with me while I try and go through a little bit of math salary cap stuff here. So the salary cap went up $10 million from last year. Yeah. The Vikings last year had about twenty-two million dollars in the quarterback position. Yep. They just gave Kirk Cousins twenty-eight million a year if it's split evenly. Yep. We are going to talk about Trevor Simeon. That's about two million. Yep. And Slaughter is probably like a million thousand. Yeah. So they're spending thirty million, thirty-one million. On their quarterbacks this year, eight or nine million cap went up ten. Why are we all now terrified that the cap is going to be such an issue? Just that math, right? That's not crazy. No. That's how it. They they have room. They're fine. And and they just got almost seven million more because Shreve Floyd's contract is not getting told. He's becoming a free agent. Um, right now, Anthony Barr his cap hits around like twelve or thirteen million, but he's probably going to get an extension that's going to lower his cap hit. Mm-hmm. Um, Who is one of the guys that everybody seems to mention when, oh, we're going to lose Barr. We're going to lose Barr. They're already projected to have like 50 to 60 million in cap space next year. So, and then add like another five, five to 10 million to that if the cap mm-hmm. increases again, which it probably will because it, it probably has every will. Year, yes. Every year. So, yeah, his, 
<laughs> All right, so let's put that to bed then. Stop talking about it. It's over, you guys. Oh, the yeah. like salary cap thing is fine. Chill out. Yeah, it's like well, people are still going to talk about it because yeah. they're just, they see that and they see other quarterbacks. He's now, for now, he's now the highest paid quarterback by like mm. I think like five hundred thousand over Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, and I think that is like for the amount of time that he is going to be the highest paid quarterback and the amount of. I don't want to say complaining because that, because there is a valid thought process to not wanting to spend too much money on a quarterback at the risk of the defense. Like I get that idea, I yep. get that argument, but he's not going to be the highest paid dude for very long. No, and it's not all that much money, and especially isn't going to be in that much money in three years when that contract is up. He's going to be no. like maybe top ten. Yeah, it'll just be interesting to see if. You know the Matt Ryan's and the Aaron Rodgers do now get their contracts fully guaranteed because of what Cousins was able to do, mm-hmm. and if they'll actually go for a shorter extension so that they can get fully guaranteed instead of you know a five or six year extension. That's right? kind of what I have been noticing here is that it seems like the long term deal, the five year, is not what they want anymore. It, they you know it seems like year two years let me bet on myself in a year we can go back to the market again and if i have a career year like a case keenum you can get paid a well, lot of money for a year like that yeah a lot of that is like a lot of that they would get the amount of money like in a five-year deal like a normal deal before kirk cousins probably would have made like 30 million in his first year anyways mm-hmm. so to get that guaranteed plus like another 50 million guaranteed in just three years you know that's that's a win for for him and they realize that they care more about they want the guaranteed money they don't really care about the longevity because they would probably make that same amount over five or six years if they went through the contract yes so they'd rather just get the money and then worry about you know a new contract later which could could be even better yes so speaking of short contracts all of the former Viking quarterbacks, Teddy Bridgewater, is going to go to New York. Wait, wait, what? no one, no one gave them a super long contract. Nope. that's weird. I thought, I thought they should have franchised Case Keenum. That's weird. I mean, that's <laughs> just one and two year deals. That's all I see. Oh, that's weird. all I have written down. It's like, it's like the Vikings know what they're doing. Exactly. It's almost like. Yeah, you know who I do feel bad for. Let, let's talk about Teddy for a little bit. So he's going to New York, yeah. five million, but up to fifteen, up to 15. million with incentive. That cool, good for him. That's a perfect. That's a perfect contract. Literally ten minutes later, it's announced that New York signs McCown and told him he's going to be the starter. Oh, I didn't know he was going to be the starter. Yeah, it was what they said. So how is Teddy going to hit those incentives? I'm sure it's like performance-based, wouldn't so you imagine? They might, they might have a little competition in training camp. I mean, I hope, I hope Teddy wins, and I think that they hope Teddy wins too. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because they'll happily that's, pay him $15 million if he's going to play yeah. like he's worth $15 million. I don't that's think not that's a lot anyway. For him. Yeah, good call. And this, yeah, now it's not. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, Bradford to Arizona, one year, eighteen million dollars. Up to twenty, I think. Up to twenty. <laughs> that's pretty. That's a lot of uh, money for he's degen- good. for degenerative he's, knees. He's good at getting that money. I don't know. He <clears> must <throat> have like the best agent. I'm world. telling you, he just walks around with a picture of the statue of him outside of that stadium in Oklahoma, oh. and he just goes, you see that? I've done uh, that. Watch me throw a football. And then he throws a football, and they're like, $19 million. Sounds great. $20 million, whatever I, you need. But I think I posted yesterday that he's played. He's missed like 42 games since 2013, and he's made $67 million. Unbelievable. Oh. And his rookie deal was the deal that, like, Created the that was like uh, the last that was like the last one the mm, rookie wage scale yeah. so yeah. like wow because what did he get guaranteed on that it was like over forty million I think yeah probably I think so, yeah that guy you know who else has played the game really well though Mr Kirk Cousins and in three years if he plays really well he's gonna be able to cash in again that dude is but, gonna make a ton of money but he's actually stayed on the field and and played well yes he has um, like Bradford who just I, I don't yes. I don't understand and then they the Cardinals just gave 
Mike Glennon eight million for like two years, I think, too. So um, they're just yeah, giving they away. They're plans. just they're giving away money. If if the Cardinals, you know, have any extra money, I'm here too. I can I can take some off. I'm ready. You know, I am prepared to go to the facility and receive a check from. Yep. Arizona. I'm pretty sure I have better knees than Sam Bradford. So. Yeah, you were probably right, unfortunately. Though. I have never right. torn that's I've nice. never torn any ACLs. <laughs> Me neither. And I still have They're three fresh. years of college eligibility left too. So I mean let's original, work it out, you know, let's make something happen. Original ACLs. <laughs> still, still mine. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> but yeah, so Bradford goes to Arizona. Arizona also, I think they released Adrian Peterson, if I'm not mistaken. Which is interesting. Who? Mm-hmm. He's gone. Now. <laughs> mm-hmm. There, yeah. No way he signs with anybody, right? There's no. He's got to be um, done. I'm, Not that I necessarily spoiler, want that. Spoiler, but. spoiler alert! I'm I'm about to write something about how if he puts his ego aside, it's possible he could either return to the Vikings or someone else because he could be like a really good goal line back. Yes, he could. Like a short yardage goal line back, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to be a full-time guy. But, he wants the offense to revolve around him and you but, just can't. Do yeah. That. But dude, like if happen. you want if you really want to win a Super Bowl or a championship, just sign a cheap deal, I don't know, 5 million and just be the short yardage guy. You'll get tons of touchdowns. Yeah. People will love Go to you. New England and, and do that one year deal, Super Bowl maybe. I mean, I yeah. for me that seems like the why wouldn't you do that? But I also am not Adrian Peterson. I don't know. I'm sure that's has to be it. Is the ego issue? I can't oh, be yeah. anything besides the most important yeah, offensive like, player. <laughs> yeah, guy rode a camel at his birthday party. Yeah, yeah. It's about all you need to know right there. Yeah. He so says, yeah. he says his, his neck is fully healed up. So whatever that means. Good job good good for him case keenum to denver two years 36 million first domino to fall Mm -hmm. late was it late it was late monday night out here at least yeah it was i think here it's like it was 10 o'clock so it's probably around midnight where you are Mm -hmm. early early tuesday i think that's a good fit i think he's could be successful there i don't know i think they're I think they're going to draft somebody. Mm-hmm. The Broncos. Yeah, because it's only a two-year contract. I think it's twenty-five guaranteed, maybe, or twenty-five with you know incentives and stuff. Yeah, but all all of it's guaranteed for injuries. So if he gets hurt, then he gets all of it. So, which is a chance. Yeah. Do you? Well, now Simeon no longer there. He's. In Minnesota, who was the other Paxton Lynch? They also have that dude, right? Did he play a lot last season? Do they know nah. everything they need to know about him, or is there a chance um, that he could be the young dude that they bring in for competition? No, I, I think or... they know what they they they've seen what they have to from him. I think he started a couple games last year just because they're trying to figure stuff out, something mm-hmm. different. Um, but no, he'll probably be the backup. Yeah, or he'll compete with a rookie to be the backup and whoever gets that if he doesn't win the second string i wouldn't be surprised if if Jackson Lynch gets released before the start of next season yeah um but the interesting thing with keenum is when he played with the vikings last year i think according to football outsiders the vikings had the sixth best offensive line in terms of pass protection interesting while the broncos had like 28 that's not a good sign so, yeah, it's going to be a lot different for Case Keenum in Denver, and I think some of the his old habits might come out there depending on what they do with their offensive line. I was hearing so much this morning on the Mothership Radio, ESPN, yeah. about how how close Cousins and Keenum are. Louis as, Riddick? Yeah, in the morning. Unbelievable, Louis yeah, I Riddick. Like that. Well, I don't... It, I I think that Case Keenum is better than people give him credit for, but I don't think he's even close to as good as No, Kirk I think Cousins. I was listening to, to Mackie and Judd, and they were playing those clips. And then, uh, Unbelievable. And they were saying, I wonder if he, you know, he's got a, a job lined up in Denver or, or Washington, the way he's talking about Keenum and Cousins and how mm-hmm. they're almost the same player. It's, like, it's bonkers to me. I mean, he has a bunch of knowledge, you know, from working as an executive and being a former NFL player. But that doesn't mean that he's right because he's not an executive anymore. Yeah. So 
I mean, that can tell you what you need to know. I mean, I can say this stuff too without him knowing because he's blocked me on Twitter. I have no idea why. Interesting. But, but yeah, I don't. I don't really care actually because I don't find any of the stuff that he says to be interesting. Yeah. Or yeah, very. It's just he's got even because like be even like, guys I don't like their opinions. I still will read some of them and listen to some of them because it's at least thought provoking. At least yeah, he's gets, one of those. He's more one of those guys at ESPN that's just trying to you know get the hot takes and mm-hmm. you know get the hits and stuff going. That's like the coldest of takes, though, good sir. I'm sorry. Like, I, you just ugh, yikes. Well, man. somebody, somebody else. I think Mike Freeman from from Bleacher Report was talking about how the like just paid a a ton of money for an average quarterback. I was just like, I don't think so. Well, I don't even. They if... paid a ton of they paid a ton of money, but I he's not an average. Like what? What do you define as an average quarterback? What's who's the average quarterback? Alex yeah. Smith. He's not bad. He had the best passer rating in all of the NFL last year. Exactly. So like, well, and there are so your... many. What's your criteria for yeah. average? Yeah, I think he's above average, and I think that the Vikings have been living in average forever, and this forever. was forever. And here's an opportunity to get somebody who's above average. You pay whatever it doesn't matter. Like the price tag at that point doesn't matter if you find a guy that is going to that you think, and they obviously do, is going to take you to the next level, as they say in the biz. Michael Michael Rand from the Star Tribune he posted that I think Fran Tarkenton is the only one to start like every game in the regular season back to back for the Vikings. He's the last one. That's crazy. Yeah, Kirk Cousins has done that. Three seasons in a row. Three, three years in a row. Just that alone makes him better than the options yeah, that the Vikings and he's, have. Yeah, he's had. taken plenty of hits. Mm. It's not like Redskins had, had a decent offensive line, but it wasn't like they, you know, protected him that well. Yeah, I just think if you look at it from the Vikings, it from Spielman's perspective, it's such a such an easy decision to go yeah, after Cousins. I, I just don't like, understand why it's so confusing to people. A lot like, of people are taking a very pessimistic, like attitude on, you know, this signing. Like they're trying to Vikings see, fans, shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're trying <laughs> to see like the bad in it instead of looking at like, okay, this guy who's passed for a ton of yards with not a whole lot of weapons. You know, he had Deshaun Jackson and and Jordan Reed and stuff for like a year, um, but he comes to Minnesota. He's got Thielen, Cook. Diggs, Rudolph, like he's just a guy that you can plug in and he'll be able to get those guys. He's not going to be the whole offense first off. The Vikings like to run the ball. Zimmer is a guy who likes to run the ball so that his defense can get some reps. He's not, uh, it's not going to be a pass happy offense. Yeah, they're going to throw down field probably because Cousins can chuck it, but yeah. Like, this isn't going to be the Kirk Cousins show. No, it's not. It, well, and that, and then look at you to assume the worst about what Cousins is going to do. Kind of ignores the fact that they have gotten a career season out of Case Keenum, a career season out of Sam Bradford, and yeah. we're turning Teddy Bridgewater into a viable starting His, option for a, a hot minute there. Right now, Teddy Bridgewater had a career year too. So yeah, good call. Three straight years. And but now but now this guy who's thrown for you know at least twenty five touchdowns the last three years started every game he's definitely gonna he's just gonna crap the bed and it's gonna be horrible uh, and paid him too much I think that's bananas to think like and that. he's probably gonna blow out both of his knees yeah well yeah well and here's no, real conspiracy theory talk <laughs> he's not signed nothing he's not signed anything yet there's still not a yet. chance that somebody else can swoop in and then who yeah, do we got then you're, who's gonna swoop in everyone else has signed people already. I mean, what if Kirk Cousins becomes available? And then we have to do another emergency do free agent release. episode because chaos ensues. Nah, that ain't going to happen. Who else would sign? Nobody else. The Jets. Browns got their guy. Jets got their people. The Broncos got their guys. <laughs> McCown and Bridgewater are your guys. Uh, Cardinals, they might Cardinals find room got for Cousins. Their, their retirement home guys. <laughs> Isn't that... Yeah, it... Where quarterbacks go to get old, Arizona, Kurt Warner, yeah, Carson, Carson Palmer. Palmer, Sam Bradford, yeah. just yeah. wheel wheel him in, injured but and I'm, wheel him Emmett out. Smith, uh, Emmett Smith went there too. Adrian Peterson. Yeah, yeah. They do have a lot of my, you know. My grandma and grandpa went every, there when they got they do old. Have a, <laughs> do you have a lot of 
<laughs> Snowbirds, that's yes, the comment. That's totally, that's just what you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord, that's real good stuff. Um, who else? Other free agents. I wanted to ask you about Honey Badger. How do you feel about him playing oh, on I that love, defense? I would love yeah, it. I, yeah, that would be good, but how much is it going to cost? Well, he, stuff, they don't have a lot of money to spend right now. They asked him to, Arizona asked him to take a pay cut. I think he was at, oh, God, I'm going to forget. I want to say $9 million, but I don't know if that's. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. And I think they asked him to take they, a pay cut. He said no, and that was. Yeah. Yeah, they, they asked, the funny thing is they asked him to take a pay cut so, so that they could afford to pay Sam Bradford. Uh-huh. Do you think they told him that? And he was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't, no, they not, probably not didn't for tell that him that, but that's why they did it. They had yeah. to make room to afford him. So he would be looking for at least $9 million if that if he was not willing to restructure. Yeah, what do they have left? Are they going to be sitting at like $12 million, $20 million? What are What is their cap space Ooh, situation going to be? At, yeah, the Vikings. After all of the Simeon and Kirk Cousins and all that. Takes well, it place. just depends on what Cousins cap it is this year. So if it's like 30 million this year, then they'll still probably have like 20 to 25 million left to, to spend. So they can afford a, probably another big, big name free agent, mm-hmm. whoever is out there. They could, they could afford Matthew, but I've seen stuff that says that their, their primary focus is to just, Get their own players signed first, and then worry about other stuff. Because they have, you know, they got a good core group of guys, and they're mm-hmm. young. You know, they the guys that are available aren't that much better or better at all than what they already have. So yeah, I always get so like uh, mad yeah, that when, all, when this stuff all, happens, where I'm like, sign all the players whose yeah, names yeah. I recognize. No, I, I did that t- today too. Like Eric Ebron got released, and like oh, I wouldn't mind seeing him. You know, with with Rudy Rudolph in there and stuff, that wouldn't be too bad. Mm. But you know, he's probably gonna go somewhere else and get a bunch of money like everybody else has. Yeah, no including, kidding. Uh, including Jarek McKinnon. Yes, McKinnon, 49ers. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, what was his number? His guaranteed number? It was. It's only his guaranteed is only like 11.7. No, oh, okay, okay. But the, the total value of the contract, I think, is 30 million. Gotcha. So it's a it's a good deal for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. It's a good deal for McKinnon too. He can, he has a chance to you know get a lot of money. Probably won't be able to get to the, the end of it. I don't think the last year of his contract is any of it's guaranteed for injury or anything. Okay. So that's a good deal. It's, it's a good opportunity for him. Um, they all of a sudden look like they are going to be a fun team to watch. I mean, not that because of Garoppolo, I think they were going to be anyways. Yeah. But now with McKinnon, that could be a, a fun. No, I, to yeah, watch. I, I like McKinnon there, especially with Kyle Shanahan. He, mm-hmm. Likes to have his running backs involved, especially in like the passing game. I think the past three th- for the past three seasons, Kyle Shanahan's been the offensive coordinator wherever he's been. At least one one running back's caught over fifty passes. Hmm. And that could like, very well be McKinnon this season. Yeah, could be. And he would he would do well, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he. Good luck to him. I wish we could have kept him. He was one of my favorites. Honestly, now that he's gone, I wouldn't have said, I don't know if I would have said that last week, but now that he's gone, I'm like, oh, I like having, he was just always there. He was always, he never made yeah. bad plays. He was never. I think, I think you said the same thing about last year when like Corey L. Patterson left, but it's mm-hmm. just, it's the, it's the business, you know, it's part of the, what happens every year. Can't keep everyone around. Mm-hmm. Poor AJ McCarron. Uh, finally, I guess he's going to Buffalo, you said? Yep. Yep. One of the Bills. But he was poor, the lo- bu- poor Buffalo. But not poor AJ McCarron. <laughs> poor Buffalo. No Tyrod Taylor. So now their quarterback room is gonna be AJ McCarron and that Peterman a- character. Yeah. No, they'll they'll draft somebody. They got they got the ammo to eat, to move up in the draft. So Oh we'll yeah, see. yeah. I bet they will move up to get one of those guys. Oh, AJ McCarron. Yeah, man, you can't beat out uh Andy Dalton. Sorry, Bob. You're definitely gonna be the last guy picked. He is he is the a typical Bills quarterback, though, like, like expectations or like hope is like so much hope is there, but mm-hmm. actual ability, not, not so much. <laughs> uh, who else did I want to talk about? Sheldon Richardson. What do you? What are? What yeah. are we hearing there? Are we? Is he just going to go back? Is that an actual possibility? I've heard there's yeah that there's some interest. The Vikings inquired about him but they also inquired about drew Brees too so you know take that with mm-hmm. whatever you grain of salt or whatever you want to take with that i think they're just <laughs> spoonful of 
Yeah, I just so. think they're seeing seeing if he's available or like what his price is, and then they're probably like, Ugh, okay, never mind. Uh, but yeah, I think he he sounds like he's going back to Seattle. Um, and Dom Kinsu is getting interest from the Cowboys and the Seahawks. So and he's he's flat out said he'll go where whoever pays him the most money. He doesn't care who's good or not. So. <laughs> that guy Whatever. it's like the more Whatever. the more i want to hate him then it's like the more i hear from him it's like actually i kind of respect that he just is not Whatever. bsing anybody just give me money dude yeah i don't care who i'm playing for just pay me a lot and i'll try not to step on anybody i did see the eagles are trying to trade eric kendrick's brother michael kendrick's that would be he's, cool he's a linebacker yeah that would be cool i don't know his best exactly, days are behind him. Yeah, I don't know how exactly point. he would fit in the Vikings defense, especially when they don't play base defense most of the time, and they mm-hmm. already have Kendricks. Uh, they already have a Kendricks in the bar. Like a, the They're, better version of the Kendricks. Yeah, <laughs> Kendricks yeah. I would is. say I would say he's the better version. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on. There's so much. I can't like, even. I was trying to like write him down, and like all, I was just like, okay, let's just stick to. The guys that have direct like connections apparently, here because apparently Kirk Cousins is a vegetarian. No, see that was an over it's... overblown report. I've done a little bit of research into that. Oh. It's not he's not a vegetarian. He's, he's just to eat better. He's just only eating lean meats, good okay. meats, so <laughs> okay. he can still go to to Manny's. Manny? Yeah, and that can all still happen. I see in this like here we are, and I that was something that I was like, oh, that's good to know. I like well, read that. Any... On has anyone has anyone checked on his sister? Is she okay? No, yeah, you know, I haven't heard anything about the sister. Yeah, they're probably not going to talk for a while. So. <laughs> Actually, I did this morning. Somebody said that maybe Sam Bradford could, you know, until he gets a house, could just stay with stay her, with her, her you know, in a guest house. I'm sure she's <laughs> – we know she's in the area, so, you know, give her a call, Sam. Sam. Bradford actually is probably going to like Arizona a lot. He likes to play golf a lot, so he's probably going to like being out there. Yeah, well, he was skiing, so – do they have they mountains got, with snow? They have mountains in Arizona. You Are you kidding? Me? With snow yeah. on the top still? Even yeah. in Arizona with the desert? Because well, they're close to they get close to Utah up there. At oh, the yeah, north, good call. The northern part of the state. So I'm from uh up here. So I don't oh, go okay. down there. Oh yeah. It's different. It's just so. cold all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then you get like two weeks of summer. And then back to cold. And then back to cold. It's sunny today out here. It's nice. Sunny. Yeah, it's sunny here, too. Wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate my sunny days more than you appreciate your sunny oh, and, days because you have so many. We didn't talk about, you know, your boy getting interest from uh, the Chargers, <laughs> from, from the, the LA team. Chargers. Yeah, from the team formerly in San Diego. That was brutal. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I just am not satisfied, you know, so far, I give Spielman a C because he still has not addressed the a kicking. C? The kicking needs, man. The kicker is still. I mean, format. That's all. I'm well, I mean, this close. They're not going to. They're not gonna need this Spielman close to starting a fire Spielman group on Gosh. Facebook because <laughs> the kicker Add needs to, to be the, the kicker needs to be addressed. Okay. Add that to the fire Zimmer. He's or he's on the Zimmer's on the hot seat. On the hot seat, yeah. I really want Sebastian Janikowski. I don't want Kai Forbath to come back. I don't think he's very good. And I think he is the typical Vikings kicker who misses the big kick that we talk about for years. I don't like it. I'm not I was, I'm sure he's a I nice was, guy, but No, I was talking today about with somebody about how oh, everyone's so thankful that Diggs just scored that touchdown and, and didn't go out of bounds on the Minis- Min- Minneapolis Miracle, so that way, you know, Kyle Forbath come in and, and really and miss. Impressed. That's exactly what was going to happen. That was exactly <laughs> what was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Janikowski, I would like him to uh, be our I think kicker. I think they'll bring somebody in, whether it be like an undrafted rookie or something like that. They'll, they'll bring sure. somebody in to eat both. I'm sure it'll be an undrafted rookie, and I'm sure he won't look that good, and I'm sure Kai Forbath will win the job again, and I'm sure he's going to miss a big kick. Yeah, like, how in a big good? Situation. Like, how how bad do you have to be to not look good in practice if you're a kicker? You got to be pretty bad. Just, just got to miss. You just miss mm-hmm. every kick? Yeah, I guess you just miss, or miss more than the guy that's kicking on the field next to you misses. I don't know. It was really interesting when I went to the training camp to watch them 
operate in their own little like goofy oh, area. And and stuff. They're totally separated and oh, like, yeah. weird. Uh, yeah, I they just, get their own. They get like their own balls. Yeah, yeah I don't trust Kai Forbath. So. <laughs> You don't trust his, his, ward, his wardrobe, wardrobe decisions? Yeah, that either. Yeah, he has a lot of uh, Dobby well, it's going eccentric. on. Eccentric. He could fit in at, like, Coachella or something. Yeah, he could. Burning Man, perhaps. Do they even still do Burning Man? I think so, yeah. Do they? Okay. I do not want to go, but yeah. Yeah, so that joke doesn't, like, totally... F- only work for people our age. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to know. Good to know. <clears throat> yeah. Kai Forbath. Get out. Yeah. So we got what? Keenum of Denver. Teddy to New York. Which which quarterback outside of Kirk Cousins do you think will have, have the most success? Um, of the three, three Vikings. Former Vikings quarterbacks. I think Case Keenum. I think Denver is a really good so. fit. And I think they can. If they can get offensive line help evidently if they can't protect him he's going to have a really rough time but if they can protect him and put him in good positions i think he could be really good for him and and play really well i just don't think teddy's going to get a chance and i don't think bradford's going to look very good if they were guaranteed to be healthy for the entire season i'd probably pick bradford yes me too 100 percent. because he's got david johnson he's got larry fitzgerald there he doesn't have he can just give them the ball he doesn't have to do that much but i don't see him lasting an entire season for sure especially because last time we saw him he was just he was just going down to the ground yeah. without even when you know okay. and maybe maybe that's part of the problem too because the year before that he played the whole season and looked great and was never i like it never was an issue it was so wonderful and yeah and then the last image in my head is him literally falling over when people got close to him yeah and you can't be good at quarterback in the NFL if you're falling over when people are close to you. You have any, I, you have any favorite Bradford memories? Mm, that might <laughs> that honestly that might be it. Is Saints, the, uh, Saints game? Yeah, Saints game was pretty good. Him just falling over his first his first game against the Packers that was pretty good. Yeah, that was really good. I don't you know I don't know if I have like a favorite memory for Bradford. I just. I I don't know. I, don't know I like watch does. I like watching him throw the football. Like those I will remember when how the ball looked when he threw it. Yeah, but he was he throws, I mean that was a good ball when he, yeah. when he wants to. What about Teddy Ted, you have any Teddy memories? Favorite Teddy memory was the you gotta go back you gotta go back quite a, quite a while. The preseason game where he, I think it was against the Chargers, where he shook somebody. It was like a linebacker. Yeah. In the set. that was my favorite. Right before his knee game. came out. Yep. That was right before. That was actually probably what shook it loose. That's probably, that was, we should look probably. into that, actually. Okay, that probably, was yeah, video evidence of that taking place. But yeah, yeah, I don't fun. know. That one or the – and I this is not favorite, but most uh, most memorable moment is him being knocked out when, <laughs> on that one play. That was uh, so uh, brutal. And then whoever was doing the camera zoomed right uh, in on his face, yeah, too. And, oh, God, that was just horrible. That was I horrible. I, I enjoyed some of his stuff from his rookie season more than second season because he had with that, that Jets overtime game. Mm-hmm. That wasn't really a whole lot of him. and just gave the ball to Jarius right? But he had some, some good games like against the Dolphins and stuff like that. And was his rookie year when he played uh, Atlanta and looked really good? At TCF? At home? At, yeah. Yeah, home. That was, yeah, that was his first start. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I was there for that. I remember that and being like, we're good. We're set with yeah. this guy. Oh, I'm very disappointed because I really liked – I just liked Teddy being on the team. I like that people talked about him as much as they talked about him, even if yeah. it maybe wasn't necessary. It was just a cool was, character to have on the team. It was good for them to, to let him go, though, because if they kept him around and Cousins – Oh my god! And the what the first time Cousins would like throw an interception, people would be like, well, "Put Teddy in." Oh, well, first incompletion, it would have oh. been all over. People are already freaking out about what Trevor Simeon yeah. being in. They're like, "Oh god, he's serious." It's like he's a backup. They just got him for like two million. Yeah, it just and the fact that you have like a strong opinion on Trevor Simeon being the backup quarterback is like really tells me so much about you friend on twitter that i've never met who's complaining about trevor simeon it's like what was i hosting here today i can't remember 
Uh, I can't remember, but it was something. It was a Keenum and Cousins take. There's so many of those out there where yeah. people just don't. They look at the results of a game instead of like actually what a player does during those games. They're like he he led us to the NFC Championship. Why didn't he come back? Yeah. Um... Well, and there's so many different <laughs> things. You can do that on so many different levels. Because you could say for you know for one person saying, "Well, he led us to the NFC Championship game," and I could throw, I could show you seven. Trey Wayne's. Yeah, Trey Wayne's I could show you seven throws that he made that were worse than anything Teddy Bridgewater has ever thrown. You know, yeah, as in, far as in like, the NFC Championship. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, show him that whole game. You know, it just drives me crazy. And then. There's so much nuance to this. There's so many different reasons to winning a game. There's so many different reasons beyond losing a game. There's so many ways you can throw for 100 yards. There's so many, you know, you can look so good throwing for 100 yards, or you can look so bad throwing for 100 yards. I think my my favorite take was actually from a former Vikings quarterback who said that, one, Case Keenum looked good, or it's it's Sage Rosenfels. He Mm -hmm. said Case Keenum looked good last year against Pittsburgh. In his first start, where he got creamed, I think he threw three interceptions. Mm-hmm. But he looked good. And Kirk Cousins is a system quarterback. I just... <laughs> no comment. How can you... Yeah, it's just crazy to me. In this time of year, it's like people get... You're so far removed. During the season, it feels like you can point to specific plays from the last week and be like... Season. Yes, it is hot take season, and it's driving me crazy. I can't oh, handle just, it anymore. It's just beginning. I know, and it makes me just want to jump right in and just throw some ridiculous hot takes. But then people start asking you, like, defend that, and I was like, I don't know. I don't want to defend it. I well, just that hot take, man. Have it. That's why you have people like me to distract people and go and write, like Johnny Menzel. Might there you go. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> I saw... Uh, I'm not going to be able to remember who had the tweet. But it was a tweet, very practical, not even the opinion of the reporter. He was just reporting something that had taken place. And every single one of his mentions were like, no, garbage, trash, this sucks, you're horrible (laughs) at your job. And it's like, the guy's just telling you what someone told him. Vikings guy? I cannot even, I want to say it was Doogie. Oh, okay. But I... It might not have been. I can't remember. But it was just unbelievable. You know, like, for in the, like, guy's reporting. It's not even his opinion on it. I don't know. It's just Twitter's hard right now, and I like it, and I'm <laughs> addicted to it, so I can't stop because I got to be on there and know, but oof. Hey, but go go get your uh, go get yourself a Kirk Cousins shirt. Yeah, I should. I just, I just, I just made one, so it says... You like that on it in the Vikings font with the Vikings logo on it. Very so go get that. It's on sale for the next day. It's fourteen dollars. Next three days on sale. Where at? Where can they find this? Tpublic.com. Actually, just just go to my Twitter profile. Links links in there. It's pinned, pinned in there. So you're a pro. That was really good. That was a uh, that was really good. Yeah, you know, I do what I can. Yeah. No, you're. Uh, we should do more of that. Uh, by the way, if you're listening and you want to. Uh, have us talk about your stuff. Give us a shout out. Send us an email. Get hey. us on Twitter. Dick's, Dick Sporting Goods. Dick Sporting Goods Good. calls. Good. Listening. <laughs> Heard you're not. looking for some sponsors. Pepsi, you need help. Come you need on help. in. You need help, you know, promoting your product. I know it's, it's hard to get it out there, but mm-hmm. we can help. We can help. We here. Target, here. you know, heard you're struggling. So. Mm-hmm. Always available, Target. Yeah. Same city. Yeah. Come on over. You can talk yeah. to me directly. Yeah. Just come over to my house. I've heard of Amazon. You know, they're struggling these days, so they need some help. Do you see the numbers on that? It's over like $200 billion for that Oh, it's dude. more than that. Ugh. For that dude. Not the just the thing. Oh, the guy that owns the, it? Yeah. yeah. I forget his name, but yeah. Over $200 billion. With yeah. a B. $200 billion. Yeah. That's too much money, man. No. I would like a couple thousand, please. Yeah, he wipes his butt with a thousand dollars. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. I would if it was me. You like be one of those memes where you're just like wiping your tears with the money. <laughs> with the money. Exactly. <laughs> All right, that was a fun, fun special episode. Real it good, uh, successful 
free agent season, I think, assuming they eventually sign him, which never can tell. We are the Vikings. They probably won't, you know, do anything. They won't have a press conference or anything. They'll just Mm -hmm. put out a... Tomorrow. You know, a Snapchat, seven-second video. That's it. Definitely. We probably... This is probably the last we'll hear about this uh, for quite some time. Oh, until next season. Yeah, definitely. Until the start of training camp, probably. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll talk about it then. Uh, but, but, but we'll talk a lot about Trevor Simmons. Yes, we will. Oh, man. And Anthony Harris. I mean, we talked about him a little bit at the beginning again today, but we still Trevor, dug in. Trevor Simeon, Kyle Sloter. That's going to be talk of the talk of the team this summer. So. Stay battle. tuned for that. That was a, that was a really good tease. All right. We will uh, see you. <laughs> See you in less than one week, good sir. All right, later. Later, Skull Bikes.